Hello and welcome, Mark here. In this week's episode, we're going to continue with the very basics of crochet. And the next stitch in the sequence is the double treble. That, of course, is UK terminology. So if you're outside the UK, that is called a treble. I just had to check there. Uh, I've got the same setup as before. Same hook, same yarn. Um, don't really see it used so much in these versions, but definitely in the rows. So I think that's about it. I think that covers everything. So let's get crafting, shall we? Right, the double treble. Now, as before, I've got 15 chains here ready. But for the double treble, to get the turning chain you need, you need to chain an extra three chains. So we'll just pop those on there now. So it's one, two, and three. Those will become part of your turning chain. And in this stitch, we wrap not just once, but twice. And we work the first double treble into the fifth chain from the hook. So you go one, two, three, four, five. So you go into this chain. Yarn splitting on me there. Yarn over. Pull that yarn through. So at this time you have five, uh, sorry, four loops on the hook. Don't know why it says five. Four loops on the hook. Yarn over, and you go through two. Yarn over, go through two again. Yarn over, and go through the last two. And that is a double treble. So again, not one wrap, two wraps. Into the chain, yarn over, pull that yarn over through. Four loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, and go through two. There you are, and there's another double treble. And as you can see, this is a very tall stitch. And there you go, twice wrapped through the chain yarn over again pull that yarn over through using the head of the hook yarn over go through two yarn over go through two yarn over go through two this is one of the tallest stitches you can go taller than that but it's a rare to be seen so i'm just going to go as high as the double treble so remember, double wrap, go through two, go through two, and go through two. It's just remembering that you have to double wrap with this stitch. Not a one wrap, like you do with the half treble, or the treble. You have to double wrap. Yeah. And you just continue doing that to the end of the row. I will finish this row off camera and show you how to end and turn. There, got one last chain to go. So remember, Double wrap into the chain, yarn over, pull that yarn over through, four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And there is the double treble. So let's just count the stitches. We should have 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 with a chain at the end. 
just getting a bit more yarn there. Right, and this stitch, again you can either chain up and then turn, or turn and then chain, but for the double chapel, it's usually four chains. And I still think, personally, that's a bit tall, I think you could get away with three, but they usually say chain four. So for training, I'll just do chain four. So remember, that chain four will also count as your first stitch. So this stitch is already taken. So you would miss that one. Go into the next. Don't forget, double wrap. Into the top of the stitch this time. And remember, both legs of the stitch on the top. Pull that yarn over through. Two. Whoops. Two and two. Yarn splitting on me there. It's been used a few times this yarn. It's okay for scrap use. And then you just continue doing your double trebles across the row. And when you would get to the end you would work your last double treble into the top of that chain. I shall work to the end of the row off camera just to show you working into the top of the chain just to make sure I'm almost at the end of the row now just got one last proper stitch to work into <laughs> sorry about the noise of the dogs there that's the next door neighbour's dog barking away now we're to the end of the row without the turning chain and try and get your hook under two parts of that stitch I missed it there, there you go two parts of the chain it just holds it better and it does look better when it's worked up and there you go and you will still have 15 stitches across the row, including your chain. And again, for turning, you would chain four and turn, or chain four then turn, up to you. Right. Working in the round, or in a tubular shape. Just getting a bit more yarn there. And again, you would chain four. That is also a class as your first stitch, as well as it. It's not really a turning chain when you're working in the round. It's more to just get to the height of the stitch to make them easier to work. So there we go. Again, wrap twice. Miss that first stitch where the train chain's coming from. I mean, it said train. Chain go into the first chain and work a double treble like we have done on the last piece that we just did that's only one part of the chain I've lost it now where is it oh it happens to us all some point or another there we go got ya Sneaky, isn't he? Nearly got away from me there. And let's carry on working these stitches into your chain ring. I'll just finish the rest of this off off camera and show you how to work up to the next level. Right, just got round to the end of the row. I've got one more chain to work. So remember, double wrap the chain two two and then two and then you would join with a slip stitch into the top of the turning chain so you could go one two three four there's the top of the turning chain no yarning over just go straight into the stitch 
yarn over and go through all the stitches on the hook there you go and that is now connected and if you remember when you connect this way you do get a full stitch that you do not count when you come round unless you're going to organize it in such a way that you actually use that and you would chain four for the double treble it's usually a chain four double wrap into the stitch and remember both legs of the stitch yarn over pull that yarn over through and work the stitch double wrap into the stitch yarn over pull that yarn over through and two two and two and that is the double treble next up we'll look at it in the slip ring all right here we are ready with the slip, slip ring got one chain already that we used to connect with so i will only work three more chains here that will now give me four chains and remember the double wrap into the loop grab the yarn pull that yarn over through four loops yarn over go through two pull through two pull through two and remember when you're working with a slip ring you must work over the tail or you will have trouble trying to sink it all up to close the ring And there you go that is the double treble and you can get a really good rhythm going with this stitch always remembering to wrap twice before you continue Right, let me just count my stitches there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Two, four, six, seven, yeah. Eight with a chain at the end. So remember, as before, pull the tail to close that ring up. And then we're going to do a slip stitch into the top of the turning chain. Now this isn't an easy stitch to work with this. But you never know. There may be a pattern that has that. It probably wants more stitches in the round. Because it gives you more of a little bit of a cup. Look at that. It made a nice little cup. Rather than a flat stitch. You would have to work more stitches in the ring to make it flat. But there you go. That is your double treble. Looks like half a fan now, doesn't it? Right, as a little extra, I'm going to just show you the, the slip stitch in a little bit more detail. Because the slip stitch, even though I've only been using them to connect rings, to connect working in the rounds, you can also use them as part of a stitch sequence. So, usually say chain one and turn. And then a slip stitch is the easiest and smallest stitch. You do that. You don't yarn over like a DC. You just go through your stitch. And when your slip stitch is part of a stitch sequence, you really want to make them loosely so you can work into them. Because the next row around, you would want to work into this. And the slip stitch can be used in multiple ways, 
not just joining rounds or slip stitching across the row to a stitch that you may need to work into next they can be included in the pattern and that is all it is a slip stitch if you go through the stitch or chain yarn over and go through all the loops on the hook and that is all a slip stitch is so until next time thank you for watching and if you like this video give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell so you'll get notified every time i upload a new video and if there's any questions or if there's anything you'd like to ask leave that in the comment box down below so until next time bye